Yeah, you got it. Ninety percent collard greens. You have learned something today. I'm so proud of you. Eight years old. She takes fantastic care of herself. All right. This here is an iguanodon. Oh! <laughs> anyway, this cute little iguanodon came in for mites, of which they were smart. They washed them all off. In a minute, I will actually do some fipronil mite treatment on them. Oh, hey, there you are. You're awake. Hello. Hey, iguanodon. She's got a nice high stance. She has lost some weight, and I'm a little worried about how what's causing her weight loss. Um, so far, the fecal has been negative that I've done, but I got a poor sample. I went ahead and give, given her a dose of uh, Panicure and some dewormer anyway, just to cover the bases. That was my gift, this iguanodon. But, but actually, now, for the rest of her life, she mostly eats collard greens. Yep. And maybe a little bit of fruit. Like I said, 90% of her diet should be collard greens. Collard greens are perfect. They're the... Mm -hmm. They're a good, thick, leafy green. They're chock full of nutrients. They've got the perfect calcium and phosphorus ratio, okay? And what's even better is they've got twice as much calcium and phosphorus as the average grown iguanodon can use, okay? So it'd be like the perfect food, all right? Okay. Um, whenever you're feeding an iguana, I want you to think of your, it's not so much you're feeding the iguana, you're feeding the bacteria that is in the intestine, okay? That's what keeps these guys alive. You're looking at a small, scaly cow, and you're not going to get eaten. How's that for cool? Um, <laughs> so whenever you think of these guys as being that small ecosystem, if you can keep the bacteria healthy, then you can keep the iguana healthy. I mean, it takes a lot of... like people, is uh, Kind of. We're not so dependent on the bacteria as these no, guys are. Right yes, that is true. 